Okay, hi. Today, it's a video. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be about this right here. So this is the 429 that we haven't seen on this channel in months. So today, we're going to talk about why we haven't seen it in months. Uh, what's going on with it? What is the build like for the motor? Um, and all that good stuff. So, I'm going to start with what happened right after we left off last time. So, last time that you've seen this motor, or heard about it, at least on this channel, was whenever we were leaving for the machine shop. So, basically, let me just do this. Okay. So, basically, we left for the machine shop with the engine. Uh, it went over there. It got bored 30 over. The crank got ground 10 under. And we also confirmed that it was a 429. We had them measure the bore, and they confirmed that it was a 429. Um, we already knew that from whenever we pulled the old pistons out. It actually had 429 written on the side of them, and the crank itself had 429 written on it. So, we pretty much already knew it was. Anyway, so what did I do build-wise? So, the rotating assembly obviously was all new. Uh, we got the crank remanned or the crank redone. It is still the crank that came in it. It's not a new crank. Um, we got the crank redone. I know my hair is crazy. I just took a shower. So, anyway. Crank redone. Uh, new bearings. 10 under bearings. And we did new rod bearings. Obviously, rod ba bearings all the way up. Uh, pistons. We put in new aluminum pistons from Rock Auto. And actually, this engine was basically built by Rock Auto. Um, at least for the build I guess you'd say of it because we got the bearings cam all the all the you know rocker arms uh push rods all that stuff lifters all that came from Rock Auto the, and uh I'm gonna get into the heads real quick so I took the heads I had to the machine shop they said they were too far gone to really do anything with so I went on rockauto.com and I looked up what new ones were going to cost, and it actually ended up being cheaper to get new heads. So these are not the 429 stock heads. I do still have them, but these are not those. Now keep in mind, when I built this engine, I wanted it to be a nice little budget build. I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money. So this made it nice and easy to just order new heads that already had valves in them and all that stuff, because it was going to cost me about $800 or $700, something like that, to get the heads redone. And I got all of these for right at five. Both of these for right at five hundred dollars. Uh, that's through Rock Auto. So anyway, um, moving on from there, I went and bought a wine stealth intake uh, aftermarket. And for a while there, I didn't know what I was going to do for fuel. And I was thinking about the Holly EFI. I'm still really attached to the idea of Holly EFI. Um, but as of right now, I'm already like two to three k in this engine, uh, just in the you know, building it up to this point, water pump, timing cover, you know, balancer, pulleys, all that. So I didn't really want to spend a whole lot of more more money on the Holly EFI system. So I found this carburetor actually, I think, two days ago on Facebook Marketplace for a hundred dollars, and I picked it up. This is a Holly 700 or 750 double pumper. Uh, this should be a carburetor big enough for this engine for now. Basically, what I want to do with this thing is I want to get it broke in. Um, at like a maybe a dyno shop or something we'll get it set in the truck and just get it broke in there and then later on down the line we'll swap this out for the Hall EFI system but for right now this is what we're going to use uh, so yeah that's pretty much the build I think new oil pump new oil pan or not oil pan but you know all that's new ARP head bolts I didn't talk about those uh, I, put, I put ARP head bolts in it because they're known to be good head bolts and so yeah that's pretty much it these were like 200 bucks but if you ask me it's well worth it you know you you don't want to spend all this money on an engine just to have the head bolts pull out of it so um I think that's it yeah so that was pretty simple basically what this thing has going for it right now is it has a bigger cam in it so it has a melling stage 2 cam and the intake and then the carb that's basically the performance mods this thing has uh, there's no aluminum heads. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. 
that's not getting turbo charged or anything like that. But um, yeah, I figure we're looking at right around 500 horsepower. Hopefully, that's what I'm figuring. Uh, these motors are already produced a lot out of the box uh, whenever they came from Ford. So asking 500 out of it's probably not that too far fetched, and that'd be right in the range of what this build really needs to be. Uh, this isn't going to be a racing truck or a drift truck or anything like that that we're going to just beat the crap out of. And it's more of a show truck and just to build to have fun with, I guess. Just just fun. And uh, I, I like this. I'm in love with this motor. I love the way it looks, the way it came out. Uh, I wouldn't have asked for it to be any different. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't regret any decisions that I made with this thing. Uh, something that I do want to talk about, it has a flat tappet cam in it. So, yeah, if you guys don't know the difference between camshaft, there is what's called a roller camshaft and a flat tappet camshaft. And that goes all the way up from the cam to the top assembly. That All that, it's either roller or flat tappet. So, flat tappet, basically, it's just, the it basically is the lifter in the cam, is basically the differences in the camshafts anyway. The lifters are basically just flat on the bottom, but they have a slight bevel, or a slight, I guess, I'm trying to say this without burping every 10 minutes. Uh, anyway, flat tap of cam is basically the, the, the journal on the cam meets up with the bottom of, of a lifter and pushes it up to open up a valve in the cylinder head your uh, yeah to open up a valve in the cylinder head that's how that works with a roller it basically the lifter itself has got a little roller on the bottom of it with needle bearings in it um, a lot of your newer engines have roller cans in them or it's a roller engine a lot of people call it a roller engine or a non roller engine this is a non roller engine um, I could have made it a roller engine but the cam and all that was going to be close to grand and I didn't want to put another grand into it whenever I got the entire thing for right under two to three hundred. So it was a it was a it was a money thing for me mainly because uh, I would have done it. But basically, and I know this is gonna sound weird, I I don't really see that much of an advantage of roller over flat tap it. Um, rollers they give that that's least resistance on the engine, so you get more horsepower. Uh, a lot of people will run them. But something to keep in mind when you're doing that is that stock heads may not work. In this case, they won't. Because uh, I did look it up. And whenever I was doing my research, I learned that you can't actually use the stock heads with the roller assembly on these. At least there weren't any kits that I found. So, because you basically have to go from a rocker bolt to a rocker stud. Um, I don't want to get really too far into that, you know, technical side of things. I want to try to stay away from that because you know um anyway so yeah that's pretty much the build in a nutshell let's see as far as the engine goes the transmission is obviously just a rebuilt c6 uh we're going automatic i know this is so weird i'm doing a 429 kind of a low horsepower low low budget build and then i'm doing an automatic that's like the opposite of what everybody does the carburetor i want to talk about it a little bit more um this like i said it's gonna be for break-in um, and I may end up liking this better, but the guy I bought this from, he said this carburetor was running whenever it was pulled. It actually came off of a 68 Mustang, which is kind of kind of interesting. And uh, real quick, I just want to talk about something. So this engine is actually a Lincoln engine. Uh, we learned that because we have the D1VE A2. What is it? D1VE A2B. Uh, the V stands for Lincoln, the D stands for 70, and the, hold on, the one, the one is the year, the D is the decade, and that means, and, and the D is the letter for the 70s, so this is actually a 71 Lincoln motor, so this was not in a Ford, this was in a Lincoln. Headers, I'm going to talk about the headers real quick. So, I picked up a set of, uh, used headers off Facebook Marketplace, because I didn't have $600 to spend on new ones. Uh, plus, it didn't really fit into the theme of this project, which is Lobo, or Low Buck. Um, and I want to kind of say this real quick. You can do whatever you want with your projects. 
uh, if you want to LS swap a 93 F-150 or you want to LS swap a Dodge Challenger, you, you do whatever you want to do. And um, I may personally, personally, I'll probably never do something like that unless I'm just really bored and I'm like, fuck it, I have it. Uh, th then I might think about it. But, you know, th just because I don't do it doesn't mean you can't do it. And I just, I don't know. I feel like I feel like there's a lot of hate out there because people are like, oh, you're, you know, not going full-fledged, you know, huge build mode. You don't have to spend all this money on your engine. Uh, engine and transmission, if I'm completely honest, they're going to get you from point A to point B. Uh, they need to work you know look good give you a lot of power and do all that and they don't even really need to look good but and I'm honest that's what they do they get you from point A to point B and you want to feel the power that that's what this that's what all these hot rod builds are about they're about power and just because you build this engine the first time one way does not mean you can't tear it back down later and build it a different way uh, this engine could probably be tore down and rebuilt 10, 12 times. I've seen LS motors and stuff like that be tore down and rebuilt 10, 12 times. So, just because you build it one way this time, it doesn't mean that you can't go back and change it. And one day, I may decide, you know what, I want to put boss heads on it. You know, make it a true boss 429. And do all that later. But for right now, this is what I'm going to put in the truck. Uh, we're going to get this motor running. Understand this motor has, has not been ran yet. Um, I honestly do not know when it'll be running I get I don't know if we're gonna break it in ourselves or what um, that'll be later on down the road but uh basically the next step of what I'm going to do I'm gonna get a spacer and a stud kit for this carburetor get some gaskets and get it bolted down um, which I may not bolt it down yet I may just go ahead and get the stuff um, but for right now it's just sitting there there's actually still tape underneath it from when I just had it covered up but uh yeah, hopefully this thing gives us the power that we're looking for and the ump that we want. And, you know, be be a super cool 81 F100. Um, update on the whole rest of the truck situation because I know we haven't even started on that yet. And that's mainly because this garage is still not cleaned out. I've had to... I, I don't know if I talked about this already. And if I have, I'll probably just edit it out. But about halfway through building this, I actually wrecked my white truck. And uh, that put a huge setback on everything. Um, I was I stopped cleaning the garage because I had to go find a new truck. I was all upset and stuff for several months. And uh, YouTube really took a hit because of the two. I, I didn't want to make YouTube videos anymore. And it was because I felt like that if I made a YouTube video, somebody was going to ask me about the truck, if I was going to get another one. And I didn't want to deal with that. Um... That truck meant a lot to me because it was my grandfather's truck. That is the main reason. It has nothing to do that it was a 95 open beer and I put all this time and effort into it. It had nothing to do with that. It was my grandfather's truck. But I actually started watching Whistling Diesel about that time. And this is going to sound weird. But he kind of got me out of that funk of, oh, this truck means so much to me. Because he buys all these trucks and does this crazy stuff with them. And they don't mean anything to him, and I'm just like, how? How can you? How can you just not care? And I realize it has nothing to do with that he doesn't care. It's he doesn't let that bog him down. And I had to get into this new mindset of that, you know, just because something I love is gone or something that I put all this care and time into, you know, the truck wasn't my grandpa. It can't replace him. You know, it it was a reminder of him. And in a way, felt like I was riding with him one more time. Uh, but it wasn't him. And bottom line is, you know, this truck was really the truck that he gave me. Uh, he gave me this truck before he died, the one that we're building this for. But this whole, this whole thing is with this motor and all that is about. Is because he gave it to me and I was like, okay, so this was basically my first truck. Um, and I just, it was me and my dad got looking at it, it was too far gone. And we knew it needed to be completely restored. And I was like, okay, I have the Explorer right now. I want to try to get me a pickup truck. Once I get me a pickup truck and I get it fixed and running and whatnot, I'm going to start the 81. And uh, I did that. I followed my schedule and I started the 81. And then I wrecked it. And I was like, crap. 
And so, anyway, we now have the red one. I love the red one. It's awesome. It's a great truck. Um, and, you know, it. I don't feel that much different driving it than when I drove the white truck. And uh, I think I was maybe making up some of it. But this truck will be a, will be the reminder of him that I need. And uh, I'm going to let my grandma drive it and all that, which is why I wanted to go EFI. You know, so that if she wanted to drive it or if one of my family members wanted to drive it around, you know, they could just get in it and fire it up instead of having to deal with a carburetor. But either way, um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of go over that, why things hit this, hit a wall, it seems like, with YouTube and everything else. I've just been, I don't know, I, I used pretty much all my money up on this that I had been saving. And, uh, I knew I would, so, but I've just kind of been building that back up. And then I had to buy another truck, and that, it took me some time to get my money recuperated to where I could start doing, you know, fun, fun stuff again. Because uh, I couldn't really do anything fun, I was just having to fix and fix and fix. And, you know, while those videos are great, you know, I, I don't want to make that all my channels about, because that's not all I'm about. I want to have fun on here. I want you guys to have fun. I don't want every video to just seem boring and long and... You know, you're, you're, you're having to watch it just because you did, just to support me. I don't want that to happen. I want people to come to watch my videos because they enjoy them. Because it's a good video. So, uh, things are going to be changing again. Um, hopefully, here in the next week or two, we have this garage cleaned out finally. And we can finally start doing some work in here. I want to try to get the F100 frame started. Because um, that should take, you know, that should that should be a good, a good video series to maybe shoot the channel back off so yeah I want to get us started back in the right direction because uh, we've kind of gotten away from what we're about we started doing more repair videos and uh, while that stuff is needs to be done um, it's just not really what I want to focus on on this channel I don't want all this channel to be as a repair channel uh, that's Chris Fix's thing that's plenty of other people's things it's just not mine you know, I, I, I do this basically to share my life with you, share my experience, you know, what what have I ran into building this engine that was that was different, you know. Uh, you know, that that's what, that's what this is about, and I just want to have fun. I just want us to all have fun in the process. So anyways, guys, I know this video's been kind of long. Uh, it'll probably get cut down to where it's not quite as dreadful to watch. But yeah, that's the build. Um, not a whole lot of upgrades, really. Mainly just a cam. We've got a intake and a pretty beefy carb on it right now. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really happy with this carb because I finally have a fuel source. And I feel like I've kind of set things in motion. Oh, we still need a distributor. And that is going to be MSD, not, straw, not stock, if you're all right about that. I am going to put an MSD distributor in it. I've already put it in the cart. I'm waiting on some money to come through. And then I'll probably be, be, probably be purchasing that. And, um, yeah. Dude, can you see the valves that spark the hole? That's fucking dope. Or is that the piston? Yo, that's the piston. What? Okay, what's well, kind of cool. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just looking at this. You can actually tell whenever it's on top dead center because of these awesome looking aluminum pistons. Oh, we also went from steel to aluminum pistons. Uh, something else that I guess I didn't really go over. So that's going to lower weight I guess and friction and it so we're gonna give it a little more power because of that and because of the bigger piston we're gonna have a bigger combustion chamber more power there so a little power adders here there's not a lot of power adders and uh, I'm just hoping we break 500 if we don't break 500 with this carburetor right here we as long as we come close I believe we'll break it with the EFI I know that's not to the wheel that's to the flywheel that I don't have bolted on yet because I haven't bought one. I need to do that. But yeah. And I actually need to get a flex plate on a flywheel because it has an automatic transmission. I have considered doing manual after I built the C6 and then I'm like, no. We're sticking with it. So, anyways. I'm going to stop yapping and jibber jabbing. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're excited for the future of the 429 build. The boat is a whole other thing that we just kind of put on the back burner out of everything else. We'll get back to the boat when we get back to the boat. 
Um, that's the best. That's all I can give you right now. Uh, I've got a million things I'm thinking about and trying to do. So I'm going to try to get the videos back on roll. I've got a lot going on in my life. So uh, that's basically why YouTube's been suffering. And I hate it. So we're going to try to get back in the groove of things here. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop a like. Subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.